how many of you have had a friend or maybe a father-in-law who's told you that you should never, ever smash your burgers? Well, today I'm gonna to show you how you can break that rule and make one of the tastiest burgers you have ever had in your life. This is Kenji Lopez Alt for Serious Seats in the Food Lab, and today we're making my ultra smashed burgers. All it takes is a bit of ground beef and uh, some specialized equipment. Here's how we do it. Now, first off, you want your ground beef. You don't need to chop it yourself or grind it yourself. You don't need short ribs, brisket, anything like that. Just plain old ground chuck will do just fine. What you really want is meat that's at least 20% fat. This one is actually 25% fat, which is gonna give us a nice juicy burger. Next up, we got our burger bun. Again, nothing special. Next, we got our sauce. You can use whatever you want here, ketchup, mayonnaise. I'm using this Thousand Island style sauce. Finally, we move on to our toppings. Now, I like to use pickles and onions in my burger. You can use tomatoes, lettuce, whatever you want. Just keep it simple. The most important part is the cheese. It has to be American cheese. And now I know what some of you are gonna say. American cheese tastes like plastic. It doesn't taste like anything. Nothing else melts like it. And for a burger of this style, it is the one you want. Save the fancy cheese for the cheese plate. Trust me on this. Now, a normal burger might have a patty about four to five ounces or so. In our burger, we're making two two ounce patties. Those are tiny patties. The idea here is that we are maximizing the amount of browned, crispy crust on this burger by using two patties instead of one. I like to use a scale and then form the patties into small balls like this. Set them aside and then turn your attention back to those buns and toppings for now. Now when it comes time to actually cook, these burgers are gonna take about 45 seconds to a minute, so you're not gonna have time to set up the buns for them while they're cooking. Instead, set them up beforehand. Toast your buns in butter, spread some of the sauce on the bottom, and then top them with your toppings. I like to put the toppings on the bottom bun, so I guess technically they're bottomings. I find that it gives it much better flavor and texture when you do it that way. You ready for the next step? Now is where some of that special equipment comes into play, and it's not that hard to get. Now, a normal burger, this is the tool you'd use to cook and flip it, a spatula. But uh, we're not gonna be using that today. Instead, what we're gonna be using is this, a trowel and a wallpaper scraper. You can find both of these at your local home goods store. They're very cheap and they are great tools in the kitchen. Now it's finally time for the cooking. You wanna use a griddle or a skillet and get it really smoking hot. Anything but nonstick will work. The idea is that you actually want those burgers to stick. Place the patties on top and then smash them down as hard as you can with that trowel twisting it a little bit to help it release. You want these burgers to be spread out flat and thin. The idea is that they're pretty much instantly going to start browning and that Maillard reaction is going to be maximized. Season them on the top with some salt and pepper. And by the way, make sure to turn on all of your fans. About 45 seconds later, those burgers are gonna be browned and ready to flip. This is where you use that wallpaper scraper. Use that scraper to scrape up the bottom of the burger, pressing down with firm, hard pressure so that you get every last bit of brown crust off of the surface. You really want to save that crust because that's where the flavor is. Now, you might notice that the burgers are almost already all the way cooked, and that's fine. We want them to cook all on one side to maximize that browning. Flip them over, immediately lay a slice of cheese on top of one patty, and then stack the other one on top. They don't need to spend any time cooking on that second side. Now it's ready to go into the bun. Slip that burger on top of its bottomings and then pause just for a second to admire that glistening, crispy brown crust. But not too long because this burger doesn't get better as it sits. Close it up and then dig in. 